Look, my liege. I just caught a grail. Check it out. Welcome back to Not A Watch Knob, I am your host Bill, and today we are going to be reviewing a grill. If you're liking these videos, don't forget to like, subscribe, share, I really appreciate it. And here we go. Okay, so this is my third Breitling. I started with my first one around two years ago and I fell in love with the brand. This is my first time getting a full kit, so I'm so excited to open it up. When you open it up, it comes in this black box. It's very sturdy and it's heavy duty. It's not just like regular cardboard. It's got some toughness and weight to it. I love how they did the nails on the side. It just kind of gives it that added touch of luxury. I got this box, uh, this whole Britling used. So um, it has a couple scuff marks, but other than that, the box is pretty neat. It has the shiny Breitling logo on the front, which I love about Breitling, that they, they really put their brand and logo on everything. It smells like real leather. That's the coolest thing right now, that this leather pouch smells like real leather for once. Finally, some, some quality. You lift out the yellow paperwork, and again, Breitling on the, on the box, and it comes with this really cool certificate of authenticity. It has the serial number right there. Let me th it's all in Swiss, which is really cool. And I know Swiss isn't like a real language, but that's the best way I can describe it. <laughs> it's in it's in another language. That's it says no attention squas in movement. I have no clue what that says. <laughs> but I think it's really cool and I'm really glad that I got it. It came with it. Nous attestons que le mouvement de votre montre Breitling a subi avec succès l'intégralité de test du contrôle officiel suisse des chronometers. We certify that the movement of your Breitling watch has successfully undergone all of the official Swiss chronometer tests. So there you have it. It's French. Um, <laughs> uh, I never took a language, as you can probably tell. In high school, college, doesn't matter. Um, true American, only know English. No, um, I'm gonna kick some butt, I'm gonna drive a big truck, I'm gonna rule this world, I'm gonna kick some ass, I'm gonna rise up, I'm gonna kick a little ass, rock, flag, and eagle! This is the Breitling Avenger Seawolf A17330. The Avenger Seawolf was introduced from 2003 to 2008. The Breitling Avenger Seawolf had computer simulations done by an institute to achieve perfect geometry of the case while dramatically increasing the size of the case components. For example, the 4.8mm case crystal, the 4.75mm thick case back, and the screw down lock and crown is patented by Breitling. Breitling SA was founded in St. Lemire by Leon Breitling in 1884. Unfortunately, Breitling died in 1914, passing the business to his son, Gaston. In 2009, Breitling developed the B01, an in-house self-winding movement. In 1936, Breitling becomes the official supplier to the Royal Air Force. This marks the start of a long-standing record of cooperation with international aviation. Breitling is known for a very high standard of craftsmanship. All of their watches are extremely tough and they can be used on a daily basis. Breitling is one of my favorite brands and I think the company itself has a lot of history and a lot of luxury all nestled into one timepiece. The specs on the Breitling Avenger are as follows. The case is surgical stainless steel, both brushed and polished, giving it very great contrast. The movement is the Breitling 17, which has a ETA 28242 base movement and a 42 hour power reserve, which is weird because usually I see 48 hour power reserves, but I digress. The water resistance is 3000 meters or 10,000 feet. <laughs> 
Dory. I love to swim in. Dory. When you want to swim, you want See, to See, I'm going to get stuck now with that song. Now it's in my head. Sorry. Which I really honestly don't know if that's true or not. I mean, it has to go through some testing, I guess. But 10,000. When the hell are you going to be 10,000 feet underwater? The bezel is unidirectional. It's got a screw down crown. Sapphire crystal with an amazing amount of anti-reflective coating. I mean, it's almost as if you can touch the dial. It just, it is so cool. That's what made me fall in love with Breitling is just looking at that dial and it, it gives it kind of a blue tint when you're looking at it through the sapphire crystal. It just, it's gorgeous. I, I, I can't stress that enough. The diameter is 45.4 millimeters. The thickness is really thick. It's 18.4 millimeters, which is, it just sticks out like a sore thumb on your, on your wrist sometimes, which I like. I mean, I'm a bigger guy and I like, I like bigger watches. The, the giant wrist watch is in these days. Um, the bracelet is called the Professional 2. It's a rubber bracelet and it has its logo everywhere. It's got branding all over it, which I really like. The lug width is 22 millimeters. And the winding, you can do both directions. And again, the reference number is the A17330. Pros and cons of this watch are as follows. One of the pros is that they have the logo everywhere, which I really like. I love how they put it on the band. Um, they marked everything with their logo, with their little writings, with their little markings. And I just, I think that really gives it an um, a amount of luxury that not many watches have. I think that, you know, the more marketing and the more branding you can put on something, I think it makes it look cool. It makes it look luxurious. Um, I've, I've liked that ever since I started watch collecting and it's just one of those features that I look for when looking for a brand. A con though, is that the watch is really thick. So you gotta watch out for those doorknobs. I mean, I walk through a doorway like, <laughs> like a starfish. I'm just, my hands are up in the air. I'm squeezing through that doorway because I do not want to bang into the watch. I mean, it, it attracts doorknobs like a hot girl attracts guys at a bar. I mean, it is ridiculous how many times I bang this thing on a doorknob. Um, so that is definitely a con because every time I nick that thing, I'm like, oh, shoot, there goes the value. <laughs> there goes my, uh, my money, <laughs> which is just, it's awful. So that's definitely a con. One of the pros though, is the sapphire crystal. Like I said before, it's got this like bluish tint and the anti-reflective coating just truly, truly mesmerizes me. I mean, it's almost like you can see every part of that watch crystal clear and the way that it catches light is just, it's, it's perfect, it's flawless in my mind. It's probably one of the best watches that I've ever had for that exact purpose. A con though, a con that I've seen with a lot of Breitlings is that they either run too fast or too slow. I've heard that from so many people. And with this watch, actually, I'm very lucky because it hasn't run fast or slow yet. But my last two, um, one ran a little slow, I believe, and the other one ran a little fast. And when I'm talking to other watch guys, they always complain about that. Like, even people who don't know watches, I talked to this guy who said he bought himself a Breitling and it wouldn't even keep the time correctly. So I think that's something that Breitling definitely has to watch out for. Either that or you just need to service them constantly. I really don't know what that problem is, but it just seems to be a reoccurring theme that I think you should watch out for when purchasing a Breitling. A pro though, is their attention to detail. Like I mentioned before, the logo is everywhere, even on the bezel, hidden next to the 12 o'clock marker. It is amazing. It's, it's like finding Easter eggs. It's it's so cool when you can see that they actually put some time and effort into this watch. I mean, even the markers as they catch the light, the polished around the markers are just gorgeous. Um, the hands, the second hand, how meticulously they wrote every word on this watch. I mean, the applied logo, everything about it is just so, so magnificently made that I just, I, I fall in love with a Breitling every time I see one. Con. If you have a small wrist, this watch is not for you. In fact, probably most Breitlings aren't for you. 
They are enormous. They are bold. They are in your face. Now that's a pro for me. However, it's a con for a lot of people, especially when they say the the best size watch is a 36 to 38. I mean, I personally don't agree with that. I think it has to do with preference, but all of the watch snobs that I watch tell me 36 to 38, that's perfect. Uh, under 40, but I personally like 40 and above. Pro, you feel luxurious wearing this watch. I mean, you just know that it is a luxury timepiece. I mean, you compare this to a, like a $500 watch and it just, it's like apples and oranges. It just feels like, you know, there's so much more to this brand and this watch and you just feel like you have a luxurious timepiece. And that's one of the beauties of it. And the, the sad thing is on my Rolex, when I first got that Rolex, in my head I built it up to be so much more. I didn't feel that standard of luxury. I mean, yeah, it's got that crown, but I just felt the Jubilee bracelet and all that felt so cheap. But with this watch, I actually feel like I got the bang for my buck. And I just love everything about Bretling when it comes to the luxury aspect of it. A con. The rubber strap. Now, I've told you before that I'm not a huge rubber strap person. I had a fake, um, <laughs> a fake Breitling band that was stainless steel on this watch before, but I was, I was sick of living a lie, um, <laughs> dramatically said. Um, I do not like the rubber strap, though, because it catches dirt. I like to wear this watch as an everyday watch. I mean, it is so tough and rugged and, and almost militant that I just love to wear it every day. And sometimes as the days go by, I notice some dirt collecting on the, the Breitling logo uh, that's underneath the, the band itself and getting dirt out of those little bees and, and everything is just the biggest pain in the butt. So that's a con for me. Definitely a con. But a pro for the watch is the style. Like I said, it's got this militant look to it. It is gorgeous. It's an uh, it's a tension grabber. I mean, people look at this watch and go, "Wow, that is a that's a hefty watch," or "Or wow, can I see that again?" Um, and I just think I've been wearing it for about almost a year, I guess. I, beginning of COVID, I purchased this used, and um, I just get compliments on it every single time I wear it. I mean, when I'm at work. People are always so intrigued by this and, you know, watch guys especially will come up and be like, damn, nice, nice Breitling, you know? And so it's, it's very stylistic. I mean, I love the matte black face that almost, it has like a grayish, bluish tint to it and it's, it really stands out. I mean, the, the dial, the uh, bezel has so much style to it. Everything about this watch is just very, it, it goes with everything. Like, I'm serious, this watch can go with any outfit you have on um i i just think it's a very very it's got so much it's got a lot of elegance as well as tough ruggedness to it i love the mixture of the two it's like you know bad boy during the day elegant suave sophisticated at night i i freaking love this watch a con and a pro sort of is the loom the Loom is Swiss Luminova and it lasts for a long time. I mean, that is a definite pro to this watch. However, I wish they could have done more Loom. I think that they should have done Loom on the numbers themselves. I think that would have added so much. I think they really dropped the ball by not putting Loom on the numbers. And I just think that they kind of let me down. I was hoping for more. I mean, my last Breitling used to glow like the friggin' Chrysler building, but you know what? I am kind of disappointed by the amount of loom they have on this. However, I'm not going to let that bog me down. Um, let me know what you think of this watch in the comments. I'd love to hear about what you think of Breitling and possibly your pros and cons. So was this watch worth it? I say hell yeah. If you ever have a chance to own a Breitling, you should go for it. I mean, these watches are just so beautiful, they're so rugged. You just won't be disappointed. I think um, buy them used, uh, new. Uh, if you're really into new watches, go ahead and splurge on it. But I think the used market on these watches is just, you gotta get it from someone credible. Definitely make sure it's a full kit. But um, I just think the value for money is just incredible. I mean, $1,900 and this, this is gonna be a, a pinnacle in my collection. And uh, I just love, love, love Breitling. I think it's one of the top brands 
that I, I've ever owned. So um, all in all, I think that Breitling is a beautiful watch and you should definitely, definitely, definitely look into it if you haven't already. Remember, I'm Bill and I'm not a watch snob and neither are you. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Bye.